Hello, everyone. Hey, everyone. I'm Victoria. And I'm Carlos Luna. <laughs> Today we're doing uh, Learning Roll 20. Uh, if you are watching this in the future on YouTube, uh, this is a show where we pick a subject and we discuss it for an hour. Uh, we also answer questions in the chat. Um, this isn't the most concise tutorial on how uh, to do something on Roll20, uh, but we're going to try uh, the best we can. Yes, we are. You know, I was just listening to you. I was just... <laughs> I was like, this You're sounds great. It? Yeah, I was. I was enjoying your <laughs> intro and forgot that I was I was supposed to talk. Yeah. yeah. Well, today we're doing artwork and the market the marketplace and artwork, right? Mm -hmm. But okay. with, that's yeah. what we're doing. But we are going to finish up the initiative tracker because we didn't yep. quite make that um, into last week's stream. And you have something new, brand spanking new, to talk about yes. like Compendium. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this has been an update uh, on the compendium in the game section, in the game settings. Uh, so I've actually haven't even used this yet. Um, I just know it was announced and it was it didn't get a lot of uh, like we put it in our blog and, you know, we tweeted it out and all that. Um, but it didn't get a full like marketing campaign or anything. But this is a compendium selection. Um, and this is something people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, so I guess the use case, this allows you to pick which, uh, which source books you want to use in your game. Um, before this, we just autom we automatically had all the books for that system load into your game so you could have access. Um, one of the problems with that, though, is what if you have a source book that you don't want to use or you don't want your players to have access to, right? Like what if there's a certain class that you know is only in this book um, and you know you don't want to have it in your game? So this kind of answers that question and allows you to do it. So if you're on uh, like a game launch uh, page, mm -hmm. yeah, you're on it right now, uh, click on settings or hover over settings. Oh, you, I do I this every time. It? No, you, I can't. You... This is the one you started. Oh, that's the one I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you have to I, go to one that you started. I can't do that. I have to go to the one that I started. See, everyone? Gotcha. Now I, now you get to see all the games I'm in. Test. Yeah. Okay. So, settings. Go to game settings? Yes, go to game settings. And then there's a new section now under the share my compendium with players. Um, <laughs> Jack's that funny. He's like, there's a lot of games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right under the share my compendium players, there's now a new section that says compendium selection. And um, if you're looking at it right now, you probably have a bunch of green boxes checked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can go through these now and uncheck the ones and make them not available in this particular game uh so let's say there are no you know, eberron uh just yeah eberron's great but it's not maybe best for an essentials game exactly and you can just go through it um we were you know people had wanted this feature for a while uh mostly because you know this exact reason right they they don't want everything that their players mm -hmm. they don't want their players to have access to every single thing that they have access to uh because players were doing builds that maybe you know they they didn't want them to build uh mm -hmm. and and not that that's a huge problem you know but it obviously saves you time if the option's not there um Mm -hmm. um yeah it's a really fun you, you just have to hit save compendium settings and you know you're off to the races there we go it's yeah it's a i think it's a great quality of life update that we did um that that's gonna help a lot of people when when they like you know the hardest part about be, running a game is wrangling right is uh wrangling your players making sure they have access to things mm -hmm. um but sometimes we've got you know, let's not, ha you know, having access to everything it can also be a problem too. So yeah. this kind of solves that. And and then, yeah, because sometimes too, um, a DM isn't thoroughly familiar with content in a book. 
and yeah. they you know they don't want that in their game because they're not familiar with it and uh this keeps things a little, little tidier and under control especially for someone like me who has everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah definitely it definitely can be an issue for people who have a lot of things or yeah. who want to try like there are people that want it to try uh, other games, you know, like stuff from Cobalt Press that might not necessarily be like Wizards of the Coast, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons or whatever. Maybe they got uh, the Margrave Player Guide or something like that. Um, and what did they do? So in the past, what did they do? Um, it would be very hard for them to set up a game and not, or, you know, they would have to cover all bases to their players and be like, yo, you can't use that. That's from this book. We're not playing that book. Uh, but now, no more. We fix that. Yay. It looks nice. It's nice and big, which I yeah. I really appreciate. It's not tiny drop down menus. Yes, yes. I love that. For someone who should be wearing her glasses but isn't. That's okay. Thumbs I'm up. I'm wearing my glasses today. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's take a look at, let's finish up the toolbar. I think we mm -hmm. just have a, the initiative tracker to do. Uh, and then we can jump into the marketplace. Um, okay. which we get a lot of questions in the marketplace. So uh, if you have questions about the marketplace, uh, go ahead and put question if you're in the chat and uh, question first and then your question right after it. Yeah. Cool. All right. So just you know, to reiterate, if you're new and you're just coming in here and you want to learn a little basics about Roll20, once you've set it, set, once you set it up a game, once you set up a game, uh, you just quite easily press launch game. And doo -doo 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 -doo. look at that. It almost worked with my doodle. -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> All right. So there we go. So initiative tracker. Let's go to where our tokens are. So we have... I know we did some things to Quizzle, so, and I think we, all right, this is too big. Let's make that small. Quizzle, is this tile connected to Quizzle? Oh yeah, good point. Yep. Cool. Cool. All right. So in order to do initiative tractor, tracking, the GM has to initiate it first. Uh, so you go to what is that little time tracking device there, otherwise known as a clock. Mm -hmm. Analog time clock. Time tracker. <laughs> I was watching the last airbender and there he has a he has a clock in his hand and he literally he literally called it something like that. <laughs> like uh, the scientist gave me a. Uh, uh, a, a sun tracker or something like that. I don't know. It was really weird. I was like, what? And I was like, oh, it's a watch. Cool. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Watches in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there aren't any currently to that can take a turn. Well, there's this one. Right click a token and choose add a turn. Add a turn. Yeah. There. Yeah. So uh, that's for a GM. Yeah, it's really easy if you're if you're a GM. Um, it's also easy if you're a player, but there is a step that players forget every single time, or maybe they don't know. Uh, and are you thinking the same one that I'm thinking that you have to click on your token before yes. you click the initial? Yes, 100%. Uh, if you are GMing on roll 20, uh, let your players know this. That uh, yes, you could yes, their character sheet is fully clickable and they can click any single button on it, uh, but they have to have their token selected before they click initiative mm -hmm. um, or else it's not going to get into the tracker. Yeah. Then they'll just roll and it will show up in the, in the chat, but it won't show up in the turn order. So yeah. once you have Quizzle or your token selected, then you just simply press the word initiative on your character sheet. Yeah. And then it works, yeah. except I don't have, there we go. It's right there, seven. Just was a delay. Yeah. And then for a DM, 
Because let's say you want Quizzle to fight this human fighter here. That is when you can right click and add a turn and it's going to be at zero and then you just click on there and manually enter their initiative. You can also just add someone. So add a custom item. So round divider, an item not in play, or if you want, you can even just add goblin one. Look at there, we got goblin one. Yeah, those are really useful. Mm -hmm. And you can change the sort order. You can do it alphabetically. Um, I actually don't know the miscellaneous for Savage Worlds. I've never played Savage Worlds. Neither um, have I. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, it was very important that they added it in there. Uh, so there were it's enough people asking. It's important to Savage Worlds. Yeah, exactly. There's enough people asking for it that they added it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy, the initiative tracker. Mm -hmm. Um and then can you can you go through um, like the next turn order and stuff like that to show them that? Next turn over, turn over. There we go. You just press next and it shows up who's next. It just highlights them so everyone knows whose turn it is. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Some a lot, of, but we do understand that like if you're new to roll 20 it's all like so overwhelming you know mm -hmm. and each and a lot of these have like their own little subsystems for using right like when you're first using like uh the initiative tracker you're in like a little system for just you know tracking this initiative tracking this combat when you're in uh the map token layer you're just setting up uh tokens and all that so I do understand that like why things can be so confusing if you've never had someone walk walk you through the entire thing because it looks like oh I can do anything which you can uh but what people really need the guidance that people really need is like what order should I do things in or what order should I learn things in um mm. I think it's really important mm -hmm. And that's why we actually, when we worked out how to use Roll20 for this show, we're, we're showing everyone things in an order um, that we feel is, is just easier to consume for as you're learning to play. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the, um, you know, a lot of times you want to do one thing or want to ac accomplish one thing. Uh, and we kind of did it in a way of like, well, episode one will get you going like right from the jump. You should be able to play as a player. And then we've kind of just added on and added on um, as we've continued with the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started with basics and like very basics of just how to create one, um, create a, a session and going from there. So yeah. That's the main thing is always click your token before you press initiative. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it for the toolbar. I mean, we mm -hmm. went over uh, the advanced dice roller, um, you know, the quick roller and the advanced dice roller, I think in like the first episode. Yeah. Um, those are pretty, that's really easy. And, you know, I always recommend if you're, if you have new play, and I'll say this in every episode, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> if you have players that are new to roll 20, uh, teach them how to open up their character sheet and teach them how to uh, teach them to click the dice roller button and just keep both of those up at the same time. Uh, and they should be good to go. Like then you, it, it's a lot easier to explain to them um, you know, roll the dice. You, you can say, you know, roll a D6, uh, and they might not have any idea what that means. They, they might be like, okay, D6, uh, let me look. I, I don't know exactly where that is. Okay, let me hover over this little dice thing. I have no idea what, what these columns mean. Um, but if you click on the dice and you open up the dice roller, you're literally looking at a D6, like mm -hmm. right in front of you. Um, so, you know, I'll say that every time. Mm-hmm. And then remember, just double click the top so you don't have to minimize it, or close it. You can just minimize it and it goes translucent, yeah. which is very handy. Especially when yeah. you have like a whole, like, <laughs> have you ever played a game where your GM just like starts handing you out all these handouts? 
and you're trying to follow what's on the handouts, plus trying to follow your dice roller and your character oh, yeah. sheet. And uh, that just makes things very handy and much more manageable. For sure. 100%. Okay. So that's that. I think we're going to the marketplace. I think we're going shopping, Carlos. Yeah. Um. Hold on one second. I think we had a... Uh... Oh, oh, I think the chat already answered. The chat is already, I love the chat. They're already answering questions before we even see them. Uh, yeah, um, looks like people are answering them. So that's good. Um, yeah, let's go to the marketplace. Okay. Let's let's do that. Uh, I love the marketplace. I love, um, I wonder if it's on our page. Uh, there's a couple things for the marketplace and I'll include this uh, link in the chat right now um so if people want it to look through it while we kind of browse and whatnot um i'll put this in there uh, this is the roll 20 help center uh specifically it's the marketplace creator uh hq so it starts in the general and then there's like a bunch of other uh topics as well um but yeah you can look around that i, I threw it in the chat for everyone to look at yeah, there, if you're thinking about becoming a creator, you know, um, it explains like how the marketplace works, how people are paid, um, you know, the split, um, why, why things aren't free, you know, um, like, I know a lot of, a lot of sites have uh, allow you to uh, put things up for free which is great. Like, I think there's a time and a place for, you know, that type of promotion for sure. Um, Roll20 has uh, set a minimum price uh, for all of the artists that create on the website of $4.99. Um, the idea being that, you know, if, if it gets any lower, it's always a race to the bottom, which we've seen over time on other sites too, uh, where people's work just isn't valued the same as people who are who are giving work away for free um which you know there's a time and a place to do that and there's you know different people have different career aspirations right uh people are fully okay with you know like uh you know doing it as a a, a weekend gig and they want everyone to have it for free um the problem with that is when, when you have a marketplace that you know we really want to respect the professionals, uh, the people that are really trying to do it in the marketplace, and and kind of like even that playing field for everyone. So uh, you know, lowering the price to zero means they have to compete with free, right? Like a person that does it, you know, for free is, is you know in the same tier as you. Um, so instead of having that competition to race to a bottom, uh, Roll Twenty has set the price at four ninety nine, um, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I appreciate that because as, as a creator, um, I under understand um, because when you are trying to price your stuff and if everyone is racing to the bottom and you don't want to, but then no one wants to buy your stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's hard, you know, like, it, and I definitely see the value on both sides, right? Like everyone sees the value on both sides. Uh, I don't think anyone's debating that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just a matter of like the ecosystem that we wanted to build, that Roll20 wanted to build. Oh, for sure. Um, is, you know, a sustainable one for, I mean, people literally make their living off the site. Like there are so many talented artists uh, that, you know, just market themselves and put them and create, you know, and create great content also uh, and put themselves out there that, we you know they're able to live full time on um you know their artwork on the site which is great mm -hmm. it's excellent but um yeah let's head over to the marketplace and i'm sure there'll be other people asking questions in the chat about you know um the creator hq uh i i'm not an expert on it <laughs> i am not a creator on it uh i i'm uh, kind of versed in you know certain parts of the process. So I should be able to help you in that. Uh, the HQ does a lot better uh, than I will. But yeah, mm -hmm. let's take a look at the marketplace right now. All right. So the marketplace, this is you when you go to roll 20, and you just click on marketplace. This is where you end up. Uh, this is the main page. So we have our featured products. 
which we've got uh, some Out of the Abyss just recently. That was just recently came out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we are trying to, we are going through the backlog. Yeah. Out of the, the <laughs> brand new game, Out of the Abyss. I don't know if you guys have heard of this game yet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like we are like Roll20 is trying to go back to the catalog and try to get everything, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, as more people ask for these things, we, we would like to have everything on the site as well. Um, but again, these all have to be fit into a production schedule, because it's not in a vacuum anywhere. Like, it's not like, oh, we are done putting out Dungeons and Dragons books. <laughs> it's just like, no, we still have to keep up with the new release schedule. And mm -hmm. we're trying to go back and do the old release schedule as well. Um, so, you know, Patience, I guess, is what I'm saying. Hey. Uh, just be patient. Uh, there are definitely people that you know read these forums and see the ass that you know people want, and they're they're trying to do it for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, just as an aside, Out of the Abyss was the first Five E campaign I played. Oh, mm -hmm. that was really? The first time I played Five E was this one, this module. What was it like? What What was your like first Five E experience? Um, it was stressful. Because Out of the Abyss is not kind. It's not. I've never played it. Yeah, oh, I, you, you start with nothing. Oh, okay. You have nothing but, like, rags on your back. <laughs> but rags? Like, yeah. Um, I ended up having to kill a spider and taking its leg, its, like, chitinous leg, and using it as a dagger because that was the <laughs> only thing that I had. Yeah, it was... It was stre my first experience was stressful, but oh, um, man. but it was fun. Um, I was I was really into it. That and and that you had played the day. other editions. You yeah, had played the other editions before them. I'd played like AD and D, uh, three point five and fourth. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I started in five E and I instantly fell in love. Um, uh, my buddy introduced and I'd wanted to play for a long time. My buddy introduced me to it uh he's like yeah i'll run a game and i was like cool and then the second time i played i was already running a dungeons and dragons podcast like this is like four years ago you know like i was just like yes i need to do this full time uh <laughs> so it was a very it was a very magical moment i wish i i wish it was wish we played a um a module but we didn't like he made up mm. his own thing yeah and all that but anyways back to the marketplace back to the marketplace you can get out of the abyss now on the marketplace um yeah and then there's a whole bunch of adventures so you can find all sorts of adventures whether it's for DD, &D, whether it's for starfinder or pathfinder or or yeah what have you a, a bunch of different systems BFF, best friends forever yeah <laughs> there's a yeah there's a bunch of different systems so like creators on the marketplace don't necessarily have to be uh people that make games, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to make a game to be a creator on the marketplace. Um, you can create tokens. Uh, you can create other forms of artwork as well. Um, you can create a board game. You know, you don't have to create a, an actual rule book or anything. Um, but yeah, there's like di different types of people and different types of creators that we have. Um, and what we've seen is people kind of just pick their little niche and they try to build it out consistently. Um, so if, if you're looking to get started on the Roll20 Marketplace, um, you know, find something that you want to, um, uh, you know, big names aside, right? Find something that you want to start and that you want to promote and that you want to consistently um, work on uh, to build. As opposed to like, I made a thing, let me drop it on there. No one's buying my thing. I don't get it. Um, which, you know, that's true in every single like marketplace whether it's roll 20 amazon like it doesn't matter like mm -hmm. you write books you write one and then you're done like it usually doesn't work that way um especially in our marketplace like people want to invest in artists so a lot of times we find that um you know you're a, you're a gm on roll 20 you want to keep buying artwork from this particular artist right so uh, you might be hesitant to invest money into one pack, knowing that they only have one pack and they don't have other packs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you consistently put it out or you, or you make a pledge that like, hey, I'm going to put out artwork every single month for you guys uh, to download, like, oh, like there might be more people looking at your stuff or, or feel like they want to invest in you as an artist because they know 
to expect the quality of work that you give and that you can, that you'll have work monthly for them. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a tip for anyone out there who's looking to be a creator on the marketplace. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency is, is a big thing. Um, as well as advertising it, create that Twitter account, engage yeah. with people and get your work out there. Yeah. 100%. You, you, you'd be surprised at how many people, and this is true everywhere, right? I see mm -hmm. this, you know, I used to be in music and I would see this in, in music all the time where like people spend hours and days of their life hard working to make one album and then it's done and they're like it's available here at this link but they're not like connecting with their audience they're not trying to find new fans uh they're not trying to cultivate that community mm -hmm. um so you know yeah that's definitely something um that's definitely something to you know invest in yourself invest in your community that you want to build and that'll definitely help you on, on the marketplace for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's from, if you're a creator now, what if you're, you're a DM and you want something cool for your players? Yeah. So let's, do we want tokens? Maybe we want some really cool tokens. Yeah. So there's a, a bunch of, you know, there's a lot on the Roll20 Marketplace to fit your style. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people forget that a lot of times, or maybe they don't, you know, i actually not going to say that at all. I was about to say people um, don't want to be creative. No, that's all people want to be. Uh, they only <laughs> want to be creative on this site. Uh, so I won't say that. I think sometimes people uh, feel like they have to do things a certain way, right? Like they have to have artwork that looks like, this or that and then they don't explore other artists uh on the on the marketplace or any other artists like period um i have no problem mixing and matching like Neither mixing and matching styles or whatever uh some people like seeing you know round forward facing tokens i like seeing that view from up above that up above view i like characters oh, that look really? like that like the yeah. top of their heads and stuff yeah yeah oh. those those are some of my favorite um actually let me open up uh, the marketplace on my side and I will pull up. Yeah. Like I definitely have, um, like favorite people for sure. Uh, there's a guy named Greg Bruni, B R U N I. B U R N I. Yeah. You can just search that in the search field. Uh, and you'll get a bunch of his stuff. Yeah. He's always coming out with cool stuff. Um, his stuff kind of like works over other people's thing. And I this is I'm my own thing. Spelling it incorrectly. Oh, B R U N I. Oh, B R U. Yeah. <laughs> Bruni, Bru, Bru, Bruni, Bru, Bruni. Um, yeah. And this is my, this is my own personal preference. This is not like he's sponsored by anything or he sponsored this <laughs> show or anything. Uh, it, it's just, you know, one of the artists that I like, there's a bunch of artists that I like on this site. Um, I like his cause I can mix and match it. Right. Like I can mm. just, uh, uh, you know, he's very consistent with his artwork and his style. I feel it lends itself on a bunch of different types of maps. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, um, this person's map and then this person for tokens, or I only do tokens and maps from, one person um but it's a good way like again like if you're on roll 20 and you're setting things up um take a look around take a look around at like the different types of artists that are out there um you know yeah and, and like look through click when you go to um go ahead and click on one of his works i did we have some halflings oh awesome i love that one the uh so if you find in you're like oh i really like these halflings you know um click his name, just click his name. And that'll take you to his page where you can see all of his other artwork or their other artwork on there. Um, this is a great way to get into things and mm -hmm. to like go down that rabbit hole of artists. Um, you know, and you can do that with just about anything. And we find that people do that very often. Like people pick artists that they like and they kind of stick with it and they kind of build out their entire universe with that. Yeah. 
And so with this, you can gift it to another user. So if you want to gift your, your DM some tokens, you can do that. Um, you can also add it to your own wish list. Um, yeah. And then you would purchase it and you go through the purchasing thing. Um, and then you download it. And it, it will show you, too, what all the items that are included in this pack tell you other things that you might like as well yeah you can definitely preview a pack before you buy it um you can put it on a wish list uh you can make several different types of wish lists if you want uh and you can gift it to someone so like gifting we see um you know sometimes we see it we see it a lot with books actually like with like um with like source books or new modules that's the one great thing about like roll 20 because you can share your compendium so mm -hmm. if you have like a group of like five people and you guys are running whatever and you're like oh descent into avernus is coming out i want to run descent um you know i want to run it for my players it's like ah, oh, but i kind of don't have an extra whatever 50 bucks or 60 bucks or however much it is um your players could gift it to you or you guys could all chip in the same amount of money uh everyone chips in 10 bucks and then you guys have uh the book to share amongst yourselves mm -hmm. um as opposed in the real world when you buy the book you know you have it on monday they have it on tuesday uh you all could have it at the same time so that's really good too mm -hmm. that's nice and handy yeah okay that's i think that's the marketplace do you yeah 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 that's the marketplace uh tokens maps artwork if you are looking to become a creator uh check out that link that i listed below if you're on youtube watching this i'll make sure that someone puts it in description for you um yeah w I, I think the split is like 70 30 too yeah. on top of that um so that's a really good thing a lot of places are a lot higher um but yeah mm -hmm. that's 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 the marketplace there's a lot of really yeah. fun stuff on there and which now we can kind of show you because next we're going to be going in there talking about that art. So you purchased some really great art. Now, what do you do with it? Yeah. So let's go to. So one of the things that I think people don't realize when they start roll 20 is that everything is already in. Like pretty much everything is already in the system for you. Um, so. A lot of like a, a lot of programs or maybe programs in general have taught us like, hey, if we want to use this new thing, you have to load it, um, which can be the case sometimes, right? Uh, but with your artwork, it is not the case. Uh, unless it's an add-on, like your artwork will go in a library that you can access anytime in any game on the virtual tabletop. Uh, so like right now you're looking at premium assets uh, mm -hmm. or your library uh, marketplace purchases. Um, that will always be there. So mm -hmm. I know sometimes people are like, hey, I just bought this thing. Where is it? You know, um, which you know, is completely understandable, right? Like you bought a thing. Where is it? Uh, it's already loaded for you. So, you know, that's something that your players might not know. Or if you're new to Roll20, you might not realize. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have, you wanted to do some tiles, didn't you? Yeah, let's do some tiles. Okay. I showed we we showed this last time, so we won't spend a lot of time on it. If uh, you're curious on how to set up a map, we kind of went over how to do the dimensions and mm -hmm. how to. Um, I still you know, drag and drop though. Yeah, I drag and drop too, um, <laughs> and then I just right click and then um, yeah, those dimensions are usually listed um, depending on who the marketplace creator is and how they named it they usually list the dimensions that it should be on there. Yes. So if you right click, yeah. So if you right click and then hit like advance and then set dimensions, um, it'll, you can type in the actual dimensions of that piece. What I like to do is just like, I like to drop a lot of them in there. I like to resize them and then I'll just copy them into the places that I want them to be in. Um, so you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and drag and drop and yeah. And they got that number because it's listed right on the image itself. Yes. Um, so it's really easy to put that in there. I have so many options. It's slow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And then you just build one at a time your dungeon. Yeah. And like, depending on what you've already set those, that page out to be, and we went over this last episode, so we're not going to stay on it too long. Um, but yeah, depending on what you set up that page, depending on what, so there's a lot of depending, right? Like there's a lot of different ways to go about it. So there's no specific, like, oh, you click this and then you have it and it will fit perfectly. Um, because everything is so system agnostic and everything can be set up in any which way. Um, but yeah, this is probably one of the easier ways is to right click on, right click on your tile, hit, uh, go to advanced, set dimensions, and type in the um, the dimensions that is on the tokens on the right-hand side. And don't forget to change it to units instead of pixels. Yes, unit instead of pixels, correct. You don't want to do a four by four pixel. Correct, yeah, be very, very tiny. It'd be very difficult. And yeah, and then you just go around and you can create your map. Yeah, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and just make sure you're doing it on the map layer. This works for just about anything. I'm doing uh, it see. on the token and object layer. It's fine. <laughs> In case easily... anyone wants to bust through those walls, that's all. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a game that shows designing a tile map. That's what, you're, that's what your game's about. Yeah. So allowing your players <laughs> to make the tile map for hey, you. Yeah, um, that would be interesting. That's an interesting concept, actually. Now you have me thinking, because now I'm picturing like this weird dungeon where um, the big bad person is like reading their thoughts and like feeding, Ooh, yeah. like, cre like creating illusions and weird dungeons based on what people expect to be there i love that yeah that'd be cool or or like i love the idea so like we talked about it last episode where you can split the party so you can split the party by dragging and dropping onto a page um mm -hmm. i like the idea of in one uh you know someone's building the map and on the second one someone is experiencing the map i like that idea Ooh, that would be cool yeah, yeah. Well, i wonder if you could have them in separate chats so they don't know you can oh that's a good point can you do that i don't think i think you can whisper mm -hmm. you can whisper to each other um so it's definitely doable mm -hmm. but are you saying so they don't well yeah because you can roll directly to your gm yeah you right? can yeah and that might just so, be yeah. fun and then the other person's like what you were doing what yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so good. Evil, evil DM things. All right. So questions. Yeah. I think it's question time. Yeah, I noticed there was a bunch of questions, but man, you guys were answering them as soon as I noticed them. Yeah, me too. Um, so we love that. I love when, I love the chat ideas too. Like when the chat has ideas or the way that they run things or the way do mm -hmm. they do things. Um, a lot of times we get a lot of times we learned gaming from your from their group of friends or from certain experiences and we've uh knighted those experiences as like law for everyone everyone must be doing this this way uh and that's not the case right like i know it's not the case because i hear a million different ways on how everyone does things uh and i can tell you there's no right way at all uh, so a lot of times things can be surprising for people like, uh, why, why doesn't it work like this? I use this all the time. It's like, well, there's a bunch of people that use it differently. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to try to compromise as best as we can with these things. I want to see what these sci-fi soldiers, Phil figures. Assassins. There's two of them. I'm just having fun now with art pieces. Nice. Yeah, Molar Duck says, I really appreciate the align grid tool. Uh, I've never actually made a map in Roll20 before. This was cool to see. Yeah, there's a, it automatically aligns. It, it snaps too, uh, which is really mm -hmm. good. Also, if you hold down, what what button is it? Alt? Alt. Uh, yeah, if you hold down Alt, you can get a more precise, so you can ignore the snapping. Mm -hmm. um, and that works for everything. That works for resizing. That works for moving. And that works for uh, rotating too. So... Uh, 
play around with your keyboard when you're on roll 20 because there's like a lot of a lot of things that you didn't know existed simply by holding down shift holding down alt holding down control when you do it when um, i learned about alt oh yeah it changed everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> you start playing you start playing differently yeah yeah it's great especially if you just have like a hand-drawn map on your screen which i will do sometimes yeah um and uh those aren't always super accurate like these map tools from the marketplace are these tiles mm -hmm. um so it was nice to be able to put things where i wanted them to be as opposed to on the grid yeah mm -hmm. oh. Okay. oh i feel like we got it i yeah, feel I like think so too. yeah um next week what are we doing next week that is a solid question that I dynamic can... lighting? Are is we it doing dynamic it lighting? already? I think we're doing dynamic lighting already. Ooh. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let me, I'm double checking my phone right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're yeah. doing dynamic lighting and uh, that should be really fun. I know a lot of people want to learn and a lot of people um, want to learn new tricks and tips and what have you, especially after the updated dynamic lighting. Yes, the new one. Now. Yeah. Uh, has Roll20 featured, uh, considered a show where you feature specific marketplace creators? That might be cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's a lot of it just is bandwidth and what we can get going uh, with the staff that we have and organizing it. Um, I know we are starting to do um, not so much a show, but on the blog, uh, we're starting to do interviews with different people. And I believe that they're going to start interviewing uh, certain marketplace creators. Uh, I don't know that process. I don't know exactly how they're picking or, or what they're picking or what's going on. I know it's in the it's in development right now because uh, we definitely do want to shine a light on all of the creators that you know uh, make this site really good. Mm -hmm. I do know that there's a show that will touch on that in development. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah definitely. There is. I didn't even think. Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> You'll know why I'm laughing later. There's definitely a show <laughs> in development. Yeah, you just sat there like, what the hell, Carlos? <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah. I just yeah, yeah, let no. you talk. Yeah, yeah. There definitely is a show in development for that as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, cool. Yeah. So I think that's that. And uh, we are going to see you next week. And it is, I did confirm, we are doing dynamic lighting. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, that's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Dun, dun, we might dun. run over. We might run over for that one, but yeah. it's really good. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. And I don't know why my OBS is being weird, but that's okay. Is it is it taking a long time to like load up? No, there's it? an error screen, and I'm afraid oh, no. to see what happens once. Uh, we'll <laughs> We're see. We're at the end of the stream, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All no right. Time for errors now. Huh? Bye, everyone.